Hello everybody, uh, we're going to do some cooking again today. Um, I'm doing a recipe that's based on an inspiration from Mang Shi. Uh, she is a Korean lady that does some cooking on the, on the internet, on YouTube to be specific. Um, very popular channel, she does some really great stuff. And uh, I'm doing a, a recipe that's inspired on her fried chicken. So we're going to do Canadian fried chicken. And why is it Canadian? Because one of the ingredients is going to be, in, of course, maple syrup. Um, but it's also going to be an adaptation for people who have type 2 diabetes. Now, type 2 diabetic people have tolerances to certain starches and sugars uh, a little bit better than others. And it's not the same for everybody. I'm not a doctor. But this one is going to be a little bit less hard on your system than if you had made the recipe that contained, you know, the enriched flour and the sugar that uh, also and often is included in the recipe. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to get going in just a minute. All right, let's go. So the first thing I like to do when I am going to do some cooking is I like to prepare the vegetables first. Um, that way I can set them aside and uh, I can use the board for doing meats and because we're going to have some chicken that we're going to need to cut on the same board. And it's always better to do the vegetables and do the meat afterwards. But you could wash the board in between. I'm just lazy. So we're going to prepare the vegetables. The first thing we need to do though is to clean the leek. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come right back. So if you've never had to prepare leek before and you've never had to clean it, probably both are going to be the case. Let me just give you a quick rundown how you do it. So you cut off most of the tail, the green part here, which is which can't really be used unless you have a very, very good digestive system. I guess you could puree this and make a soup with it, but it's very hard to digest. I wouldn't suggest it. And you want to cut up, you know, the top here. So, you know, usually this would be here and the tail would have been there. Then what you do, you split it down the middle and you try to get to the center of it. So it's split all the down. Sorry for the, the lamp there. And uh, well, you take peel off the first, the first little piece of skin there because it's probably dirty still, even though you cleaned it. Now you're sure that you've got the first one here is clean. And then you run some water inside here. Sometimes dirt does get in here. So that's how you're going to do it. And after that, to prepare it, well, it's very simple. You just cut it twice. It's a bit long. So since this is going to be for taste and decoration, we don't want it to be too long. And then you just cut it along its length like this. And you do that as many times until you get like little straws, right? So let me do this again for you where you can see the action all up close. Cut it up in half and just chop, 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 right? Now, as usual, be careful with the fingers. There is there's a technique where you can just bend your fingers like that. But, you know, some people are clumsy enough, such as myself, that I could still cut myself. So I'd just rather be very careful when I, when I use a knife. All right, so we have nice little straw thingies there that we're going to have for our preparation later on. Yeah, okay, so if I said the word lee before, or lychee, I sometimes confuse them both. I'm really sorry. These are leeks. Lychees are fruit, right? So lychee, they make drinks with it. It's a, sw it's a sweet little fruit. Kind of looks like a mix between a size of a raspberry, a strawberry, but looks kind of like, like a raspberry. This is a leek. So you want to get leeks when you go to the grocery store. You'll, you'll recognize them immediately, but I may have made a mistake when I mentioned them. Okay, so... Then after that, we're going to prepare the peppers. Now, the peppers that you can use, um, you can go ahead and choose whatever you like. Um, I got a nice variety here because they had this neat pack in the grocery store where I had a jalapeno, a red pepper, and this white pepper, which I've never used before. So this is what we're going to be using today, but you can use whatever you like. Um, you can adjust for taste as well because some peppers are stronger than others, and not everybody likes you know, the really, really hot peppers. So you go ahead and choose whatever you like. All right, so I know my technique is not the best. It's a little wasteful, but it saves a lot of time. And since I have three peppers, which is plenty for my recipe, I'm just going to go ahead and chop off the tail all together, right? Set that aside. Do that for all three. 
Well, I can already smell that these are going to be really spicy. But it's okay. I got a pretty good tolerance to spicy food. Which is kind of why I'm making this recipe in the first place. So a lot of people like to bother trying to seed these before they cut them. I don't think it's really worth the time. Um, I find that when you cut them, they have a tendency to stick together. So you can just separate the parts, you know, that are very seedy and just rub them apart, right? So you can do it that way. I'm not yet an expert with a knife, which is, yeah, if you ever heard, in a lot of uh, oriental cooking, it's the first thing that you have to learn is how to manipulate a knife very, very, very well. I'm okay with it. I mean, I don't injure myself, so that's, I would think that's important. But uh, when it comes to cooking things quickly and even slices and things like that, um, I still need work. So your mileage may vary and you may do very well and very much better than I do. I do cooking for fun. This is not something I do for a living. Um, I think I would like to, but I don't think that um, in this day and age, opening a restaurant on a gut feeling is a good idea. So I just hope my recipes will inspire you to try cooking stuff on your own and or get a little traction for me to do this more often to entertain and perhaps earn revenue but that's a different story right okay so we're almost there i'm gonna try a different technique now where i can actually see the core and the seeds that allows me to avoid it a little bit better look at this this is working out grand all right got this core can set it aside chop chop Right. So preppers are now all cut. All right. So I'm just putting these in a bowl. I'm going to clean the board and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to uh, prepare the green onions. Uh, green onions are not very difficult to prepare. Pretty much the same thing as the leek, I guess. Cut off the heads and you cut it just before you get to the really really green part and then we're going to chop them um, if there is a loose first uh, skin peel on top of it i do suggest you get rid of it it's probably not going to be very good um, it, it doesn't do much for texture either so we're going to do that right now so let's grab these i like to put them together and i'm going to switch knives because the other one wasn't quite sharp enough and i was feeling a little risque continuing to use it i said i'm going to cut my fingers if i keep doing that so I do this here and cut them at the length where we suppose we're going to finish. Like I said, see this peel here doesn't look very appealing. So I'm going to remove that. Let me switch the camera for you. All right. So I'm going to remove the first peel nice and smooth. This one here. Oh, there's a little bit of it here. So let me get rid of that real quick. All right. And that's done. And this one here, same thing, I guess. There is a peel that wants to. That's begging, that's beckoning, that is telling me, please take me off. Well, that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Come on. Little peel. I didn't find it appealing. That's why I wanted to remove it, right? Ha ha ha. All right. So, put these all together kind of evenly. And then you can, you don't have to chop them very fine. Chop them pretty gross. This is going to be for the sauce. So I'm not really concerned with um, them being very blended. And I might keep just part of the tail or the end of it for when we're frying the chicken. So. Yeah, see, I think I'm going to keep these and I'm going to use it for frying. So I'm going to put this in here for the sauce and the garnishing after. The bowl over here. And these guys we're going to use for the garnishing, not the garnishing, the batter. 
All right. And again, kind of gross cutting. Doesn't have to be all, all very, very fine. That should be plenty, right? With what was stuck on the knife, I got plenty now. All right, so let me set these aside. Here, this just occurred to me just now. Um, um, you know, when you get buy, I buy ice cream and you can get it in the large containers of family size. Um, these are really great for when you're doing this kind of thing and you have some some refuse that you want to dispose of temporarily. Don't leave it around on the counter. It can be very easy to put in the, com the compost later. So finally got around to it. I, I was starting to clean the counter and I realized like, hey, I should have done this before. So there you go, for folks, uh, learning as we're going along. Um, now we're going to prepare the garlic. So I don't know if you've prepared garlic before. You probably have. You've probably seen a thousand cooking shows that do this. But if you haven't, I'm going to teach you how to peel uh, a garlic clove uh, really quick and it's it's super simple it's almost silly and uh, well you need a big knife or you need one that's actually broad enough because you have to knock it pretty hard so if you knock it flat pretty hard what it happens is that the inside was nice and juicy the part that you want is going to kind of slip out of its peel so let's try it all right bam all right see that now there's a nice little slippery part that's going to come out so I'm going to switch the camera and we're going to do a try to see it a little bit up close, all right? So here we go. All right, that one's already kind of peeled by itself, but let's let's do this one, all right? Look at that. Bam. All right? So now the see it just fell out. So it's that easy. And it's quite convenient, right? So bam. Oh, I was a little timid there. All right. So that's pretty much it. So we're going to need four cloves for this, right? Um, I find garlic with chicken is almost, you know, they kind of belong together. There's other spices that I, you know, generically like to have a lot. Um, pepper, uh, salt and pepper is almost, almost always included in my recipes. I also have a mix of Italian spices that I like to put in almost everything. And uh, yeah, so for chicken, garlic is kind of like my go-to herb or seasoning that I put together. Now, some people, when they want to ch chop garlic, what they do is, is that before they start chopping it, because it's kind of round and slippery, they clobber it again, right? They kind of flatten it. They, it doesn't turn it into a paste, really, but it kind of turns it into something that's a little bit more malleable. So you can either clobber it. Or another way that I've seen it done is you just press on it hard. So let's give that a try. All right, so it just went crunch and flattened, and now it should be a little bit easier to chop. And it is, all right? Now, this is a trick I picked from, uh, I would say, my colleague, Mangshi, the Korean cooking lady. And uh, She's pretty good at what she does, so I have a tendency to imitate her when I can. So, all right, so our garlic is ready. Now, since it's going to be part of uh, the, 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 the sauce, um, I'm going to include this with the vegetables here. Now, I'm all using the same bowl for the vegetable, but I'm doing them in the order, the reverse order that they're going to be cooked. All right, so this is a little trick of mine. Because I'm lazy and I don't like to cl clean a lot of dishes, the way I do it is I put the last vegetables that I'm going to cook, I put them in the bottom of the bowl, and as I'm going to cook them earlier, I put them on the top. So that way, when I'm going to start cooking later on, I'm going to do the vegetables for the, the garnishing. The first vegetables that I want to cook are on top. So I can just take those, put them in, and then work my way down through the bowl. You can have 15 bowls too, if that works for you, but it doesn't work for me. I'm a little lazy, so that's a little pro tip for people who are like me that don't like to uh, do too many dishes. All right, uh, so we are ready to cook the, the chicken here, and I'm a little embarrassed because I have a lot of packaging here. Um, I was looking to buy two kilograms of, uh, no, pardon me, a kilogram of chicken, two pounds, hence the confusion. Um, 
And uh, for all the packaging that I was looking at that was exactly one kilo or around one kilo, they were selling a dollar a, a kilogram more than the individual packaging, which makes no sense. It's the same breast or approximately the same size. I mean, they're chicken breast or boned. It's not too complicated. So I didn't understand why these were so much cheaper. Maybe I didn't really look at the date. Maybe it's because, you know, the other ones were fresher. But I decided to buy this one strictly on the fact that they were significantly cheaper. So uh, sorry for the extra packaging. Usually I'm not this wasteful, but in this particular case, it was just a matter of being practical, right? So this is going to give me another opportunity to just show you about the size we want to cut these. And we, we're going to repeat the process for the, the two other packages that I have. I have three packages total. Um, I don't, I, I guess, you know, you see me do one, you understand how it's going to work for the rest. So it's going to actually save us a little bit of time. I'll just show you how to cut these. It's not very complicated, right? So I'm going to get our butcher's knife. Now I have to wash my hands because I touched this, but we want to make like, make them a little bit more than bite size, you know? So it's not, it's not a nugget that we're trying to do. We're trying to make a bite size. So this should be about good, right? And we're going to repeat that several times. Yeah, so you imagine you're in a a, uh, a nice restaurant and you're going to be eating this. And since it's inspired by Asian cooking, you know, maybe you would be eating these with chopsticks. So they kind of have to be bite-sized. Anyways, I think it's nice when you prepare food for people that they don't have to work at it too much. Unless, of course, you're making a steak. In which case you want people to have that uh, visceral experience of cutting it up themselves. So that's it, you know, just about this size, which will make when it's fried a nice, a nice little bite size kind of thing that you're going to bite in once or twice uh, for every one that you get. So, so let's do this just one more time from this vantage point, All right? So you guys get a better view of what's the size I'm talking about. Just a nice little mouthful size, right? It should be pretty clear by now. So we got rid of the cutting board. We're not going to need it anymore. Everything has been cut to pieces, whatever needed to be cut at the time. Uh, chicken's here. So this is going to serve about two people. It's a, it's a meal, right? So you imagine if you had a little salad on the side, there's plenty of food here for two people. Um, so uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about is, you know, washing your hands when you're, you're, you're preparing chicken. So I know I'm going to be, I'm going to have my hands in this in two minutes again with uh, the batter, but I can't stress this enough. Every time you're going to do anything with chicken and in between the steps, I recommend that you wash your hands because you're necessarily going to touch something else on your way back and forth from doing the steps, right, of whatever cooking you're doing. So uh, please, um, by all means, uh, get in the habit of washing your hands. I mean, just, you know, grabbing the towel to do this, you would contaminate the towel and then you could touch the vegetables again and then, you know, make everybody sick. So anyway, just get in the habit of washing your hands, guys. It's good in the kitchen if you're, you're not doing it already. And if you're uh, an apprentice cook like me and you're trying to get uh, around doing things, it's not a good idea to make your guests sick if you make food, right? So... <laughs> Let's uh, let's be careful with that. Okay, so we're going to prepare this. Um, let me talk to you about the ingredients. So so I mentioned before that this recipe is going to be uh, diabetic type two friendly. So what does that mean? Well, people who are diabetic type two, um, they kind of have the opposite problem that people who are diabetic type one, except it has the same result. It's a problem with insulin. So type 2 diabetic people, such as myself, um, we, we tolerate insulin as, as if we have some, but our body doesn't really care. So in the end, your blood sugar has a tendency to be, you know, a little too high. And we take medication for that. And so we have to watch what we eat. We can't eat things that are very sweet or very rich in carbs. Now, that's not exactly exactly true is that some carbs are worse than others so enriched white flour for instance bleached white flour all-purpose that's kind of bad so pasta and those kind of things are also bad but whole wheat flour is fine so basically the more the carb the fiber is something that you have to work at digestion time 
the less bad it is. I won't say it's good, but the less bad it is. And one of the funny exceptions that I found, and this is my personal experience, is that uh, potato starch has practically no reaction as far as my glucose and my insulin levels. And the other one is maple syrup, which is why we're going to be using it for this recipe later on when we're going to be making the sauce. Okay. So um, let's have at it. I need to get two eggs and put these in here. Mix these ingredients together. We're going to put in the spices. I got to tell you about one of the spices that I put in here that is a little unusual. That might not be easy for you to find, but you could, you know, use something else. I will get you some details on that in just a minute. Uh, let me grab some fresh eggs and we're going to toss them in here and get that started. So I buy these very large cartons of eggs that have like 36 eggs in them. It's like, you know, three dozen of eggs. And because, you know, generally they're just more economical. And being somebody who eats uh, less carbs and more protein, eggs are part of my diet uh, commonly. So um, it's really convenient that when you have your egg count is getting low in the crate that you can actually whittle it down um, to... A smaller piece a carton in the uh, in the refrigerator now you could do this with a dozen too you could just cut it as you consume the eggs but it seems more reasonable when the thing is about a square foot right and you have to <laughs> save some space in your in your uh, in your in your uh, in your refrigerator darn it okay here we go so I said I was gonna talk to you about a spice and let's get that to that because we're gonna be editing it immediately let me get that to, for you in it so just a quick disclaimer, um, I don't get sponsored for any of this and whatever I'm showing you is because it's stuff I really use. It's not because, you know, people tell me, you know, we'll give you money for this or we're sponsoring you or, you know, so this is totally unbiased. This is the kind of stuff I use. This is a sp particular spice I was telling you about. So I have a little bowl of spice here. Let me grab it for you. Get Mr. Mouse out of the way, right? So you can see there's like four different things here. There's salt just black pepper uh, this is a, a Italian mix and it's very common you can get that everywhere and then there's a tablespoon of this stuff so there's four tablespoons equally of salt black pepper Italian spice and uh, this guy over here so if you find this stuff it's it's amazing um, it gives a little bit of spice again um, but also texture and it's a mix of it so I find it's great for for these kind of recipes all right so let's get to it I'm going to pour this over the chicken and if you spread it out, it makes it easier when you're going to get to the mixing in a bit, right? All right, that's done. Now let's get cracking. These eggs are actually harder than the bowl. I kid you not. So end of one. And the two. I like doing this because you don't have to be too careful about the eggs when you're doing this part here. And I'm going to start mushing this right away because I want the eggs to be all over the meat when I start putting what is going to become the batter. All right? The egg is the kind of glue that's going to make all of this work in the end. So um, I should have mentioned, you can also get these uh, inexpensive uh, plastic latex, latex gloves if you're squeamish about, you know, manipulating, you know, chicken and stuff like that. Um, but obviously for environmental reasons, I would much rather recommend that you just use your hands and wash them with soap and water. But I wouldn't want that to inhibit you to have a, a good time with some food because, you know, you don't like to get your hands all mushy so we're going to add whole, add whole wheat flour so we got a quarter cup of whole wheat flour here so we're just going to pour that in All right and again I, I try to spread it a little bit because it makes my job easier of mixing if it's already kind of spread out and then we have uh, a cup one full cup of uh, potato starch now you should be able to get this in the grocery store but if you can't and you have uh, an ethnic grocery store not too far, for sure you'll find this in an Asian supermarket. So this is really easy to get usually. Um, I get mine online, <laughs> funny enough, because in my, uh, in my suburb, 
uh, it's not easily available. So, and I do all kinds of things with this. I will we'll do some on a, in a different video. I'll show you how to make noodles with this, and they are also. Uh, well, they're delicious, first of all, and second of all, they're also friendly for people who have diabetes because we have a tendency to avoid having noodles being diabetic because they're usually noodles made with whole wheat flour, semolina, and we don't tolerate that very well. That, that makes our blood sugar kind of go cuckoo, but this stuff doesn't. So right so you kind of need this thing and you'll feel that there are some pieces that are stickier than others and they're the ones that you have to get back into the powder that's in the bottom that's sticking to the bottom right so you rub this thing in until it doesn't stick to your fingers anymore so if you have a couple of pieces that are sticky rotate it my bowl is made to spin under a uh, a blender it's not very stable for me doing this kind of stuff but since I'm not a professional cook and I don't do this for a living I'm not gonna go out and get another bowl just for this so that's it try to scrape some of that better off of your fingers it's gonna be better for it cooking later on and now we're almost ready to start cooking our chicken Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the sauce we're going to make. It is basically butter-based. So we have here uh, about uh, an eighth of a pound of butter. So not a stick, but a pound. Uh, we have about a quarter cup of maple syrup. Uh, the darker, the better, because the flavor is richer. But it can get kind of expensive when you get the really, really dark stuff. Uh, though there is uh, the market's kind of good these days so you could probably afford it and we're going to get some chili powder so these are the three main ingredients um, aside from that you knew that we chopped some onions earlier on that we got right here okay and we're going to use a little bit of the garlic that we put on top of the vegetables before so we're all gonna cook that together to make it uh, the base of the sauce right so we're gonna be doing that in just a second I'll see you there so this is going to get a little tricky to film um, without having a camera directly overhead and I haven't yet rigged my, 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 my cooking range for having a camera on the, on the hood yet. So bear with me. I'm going to be talking you through it mostly. Um, it's just, you know, combining the ingredients in the pan and uh, you can see how I rigged my, my probe to make sure that it doesn't touch the bottom of the pan, but it's still uh, holds uh, within the oil to get the temperature and we're about 151 so we should get cracking so let me just grab the ingredients real quick so my skillet is about I would say a 12 inch pan you put it on high drop the butter in right so that's pretty straightforward and until it melts you just get the other ingredients close so I'm gonna grab my garlic my little bit of garlic my green onions, put this nearby, chili powder, and syrup on standby, right? So keep an eye on the oil, keep an eye on everything here. A little something that I should have added, um, I am in the habit of using unsalted butter because while it's a lot easier to add salt afterwards than uh, trying to remove it from butter, so I buy it unsalted and when my recipe calls for salt then I add some. We are going to be adding a couple of pinches of salt. I would say a quarter of a tablespoon total in our recipe. So if I had mentioned that before I apologize. Unbuttered salt is what I usually use for cooking and in this particular case we are going to have to add a little bit of salt. As soon as your butter starts to snap and pop like it's doing here, turn your fire way down like between one and two, right? And start adding your ingredients. So let's start with the onions and the garlic, right? And if you want it to cool down a little bit quicker, you can just lift the pan, right? So you lift the pan, you see, 
it doesn't want to spill so much and then you put it back down and you can gauge if your cooking surface has slowed down so gas cooking is really great for this because it adjusts almost instantly you turn the fire down it gets cold colder a lot quicker uh, electrics a little bit trickier induction is okay it's got its own problems so gas is really great but we don't have gas here well we do but I don't have it installed I guess this is the way we're going to do it now we want this to get almost starting to brown before we decide to do anything else and you can start to see well you could if I show you you can start to see that it's ever so slightly starting to yellow so this is the right time and our probe is telling us the oil is hot enough so we're going to be just in time half a tablespoon of chili powder that's annoying isn't it maple syrup stir that in thank you sir mix this up right and keep that on very low and let it reduce for a while and very soon we're going to come and add our vegetables now our oil is hot and ready so always use mittens when you're touching a hot probe very careful with these buggers they get hot right and in order to put the chicken in I like to use a pair of very long tongs now don't drop the chicken in just deposit it in there gently and try to look for the pieces of chicken that are the most the, the better covered with batter and then we can address the ones that are not so well covered as we move along right so these are all nice and stuck together I'm being sarcastic when I say nice I would I would hope that they wouldn't be but beggars can't be choosers so I'd say there's about 750 milliliters of oil so canisters here in Canada are sold by the liter one liter two liters and whatnot and in this particular case it was a two liter so that's what gives me an idea of how much I put in there how much is left in the canister try to separate these as best you can as you're putting them in it's not critical But when it'll come to serving them later, if they are separate, you'll see that it's a little easier to handle. Now, because I'm using an electric an electric range, I have a little metal ring that holds my wok up for cooking it acts as a heat concentrator you can get those online fairly, fairly easily just make sure you get the right size which can be tricky now I realize I may not have added enough oil so I'll do this in two batches so this is going to take about four minutes and and you want to turn them around also give you an idea what you're gonna get into now our, our Korean cooking lady friend right I'll put a link into her, her channel below so you guys can see uh, what she's all about um, she she always uh, recommends that we fry things twice because despite the fact that they're gonna be cooked and they're gonna be fried um, they're not gonna stay crunchy 
from the first frying. So what she recommends to do is to do two frying. So you fry them once and then you drain them, you let them sit, and then you fry them once again just before you serve them. So that's her secret that she told everybody on the internet how to make the chicken stay crunchy. Thank you very much for that, uh, that trick and that tip. We've, uh, we've turned off the fire on the, the, the sauce. So this is what it looks like now. Right, so it's just like a nice little gooey mess right now. And that's gonna be great when we, uh, we're gonna toss everything together in this pan later on uh, with uh, the chicken, the vegetables, and everything. So we're all gonna saute this together at the end. So that's gonna be great. So this is pretty much ready here. So the sauce, we're just gonna turn it off. It's just very slowly bubbling and it's just uh, right now simmering. So we're gonna turn it off. So don't worry at the beginning if when you're starting to fry your uh, chicken, and I'm using corn oil by the way, uh, if you're starting to cook it, it smells a little strange. Uh, sometimes things can even smell a little bit fishy and that's totally normal. Later on, as the things are starting to cook and the spices really you know, get mixed in, things are gonna start to smell a lot better. If, it's, if it smells very fishy and that smell is persistent, probably your oil has gone bad. So you might want to be looking into changing that oil before you try doing any more cooking with that, uh, with that batch of oil. All right? Here's another tip. Um, you probably turned your, your heat all the way up when you wanted your oil to get hot to 350 degrees. Don't leave it there. When you start cooking, um, it, as soon as it's reached the right temperature and you know when it's the right temperature, by the way, you can also tell it's the right temperature if you throw in some chicken and it starts to bubble. It will take, like, tick, typically take about 10 minutes for it to get the right temperature, but it's a good way to check too. Um, in Asian cooking shows, sometimes they'll use a wooden chopstick. If you put the wooden chopstick in and it starts to bubble slightly, you're right the wrong temp right temperature. But what I was trying to say is, once you've gotten to that temperature, you want to lower your fire because if you throw the chicken in, it's going to make the temperature drop. So it's okay if you lift it high for a while, but eventually the heat is going to catch up and it's going to cascade and it's going to get warmer and warmer. And then things are, might get out of control, make a really big bubbling, splashing, uh, catching fire if you catch my drift. So you might want to keep that under control. So bring it down about three quarters of the temperature that you had it on. A few minutes in when you start to see the bubbling becoming very vigorous and then uh, gradually bring it down if necessary. Okay, I wanted to do a quick uh, message about the nutritional value of the food that we're doing tonight. It's obviously not, it's not health food. Fried food is very, <laughs> it's not usually health food when it's fried. However, what makes it not for very healthy food is the fact that we're mixing a sugar and fat. Sugar and fat together, they make calories stick to your everywhere really, really, really quick. Um, sugar by itself is pretty bad. Uh, fat by itself is not so bad, but then together it, it's potentially the worst. So that's why we want to keep the sugar content of this very low and we want to have this on an infrequent basis. So I'm not a health expert, I'm not a nutrition expert, I'm just concerned about my sugar levels and I'm you know sharing this concern with you but uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, go talk to your nutritionist, your doctor, whoever, like I said, and find out for yourself what's gonna work, but this with moderation won't kill you. All right, so it's been four minutes for sure, and in the case of chicken, it's better to overcook a bit than undercook. So I prepared here, you can't see it, but let me lift it up. I got a little strainer here and a metal bowl, and I'm gonna slowly transfer these things there and I'm gonna let them drip dry, right? So, since we want to let these sit for a while before we do the double fry, guess what we're gonna do with this hot oil? Remember that other batch of chicken that was just sitting there? Well, I think this is a great opportunity to get that started. So let's do that. As soon as we get this all out, Right, and this setup with the, the, 
the strainer and the steel bowl is also good you'll see in a while because I'm going to be using this steel bowl to gather the excess oil that's here when I want to do the second cooking well I mean not the second frying which we're doing right now but I mean we're going to want to cook all of these together in a little bit right in a uh, and the sauce that we prepared. I turned my fire down a little bit too low, so I just raised it again. I'll try to separate my chicken because smaller pieces of chicken cook quicker. Now, I use boneless breasts. Some people like um, dark meat which means, you know, legs and whatnot. You could do that. You could chop up uh, some legs and have them bone, with the bone, sorry. But uh, be aware about your cooking time. Cooking anything with the bone makes the cooking time a lot longer. So be aware. Raw chicken is bad. Uncooked chicken is bad. I forget what the stats are. But there's actually a decent part of the population, well, just one person would be too much, but there's a decent part of the population that actually dies each year from meats not well enough cooked. So let's not try to do that here, right? So we're going to let that cook, and we'll get back to you later. Flash forward. So I went ahead and I did a little experiment for you guys while the, the stuff was cooking. And I know that the boiling is just about right. I wanted to put my probe into the, uh, the, the oil again and made sure that I was not touching any of the chicken. The temperature right now is gravitating around 260 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, I mentioned before, when you throw the chicken in, the temperature drops significantly. But that's why you wanted to get it that high in the first place, right? And once you get it that high and then you, it's used to having chicken in it, I guess... Uh, when you add some more it's going to drop again right so but now it's bubbling as it should be and it's around 260 degrees so just keep that in mind if you have uh, any way of determining yourself the temperature of your 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 fire or the oil that you're cooking at if it gets to around 260 degrees and that's what it's cooking at stably that's about right just so you know i'm going to take out now the second batch uh, from the the frying and uh, while I was off camera and while this was cooking, I looked at the chicken that we had. It looked okay, but I said, hmm, let's batter it one more time. So I doubled the recipe of batter, and I'm going to have all of this go through the batter one more time before I refry it. So let's just get this out and get the other ones in. All right, so the second batch is about to finish uh, frying right now. And while it was cooking, I'll tell you what I did. Um, I went ahead... And I decided to create a second batch of batter. And I decided to re-batter the chicken because I thought we could do better with the batter. Get it? Okay, it wasn't very funny. So let me just grab this, take it out. Now it's normal that the oil level starts to drop a little bit as the chicken saturates with some of the oil so we might have to add some more oil to be able to cook the chicken that we had before normally most of the excess oil is going to drop in the bottom of the strainer here and there shouldn't be that much that stays on the chicken itself but still yet yeah, well that's hot let's not do that we're going to want to add a little bit of oil so about half a cup should do. Shouldn't get much more than that. So let's keep that fire nice and hot. And let's bring this chicken and put it back in. It is going to be extra crispy. Now I apologize for the notifications on my phone. I'm obviously not a professional doing this. A professional person would have turned everything in the house off to make sure that there's no noise when they're doing their show. But I'm just doing this for fun. And I'm hoping that you guys are going to get a kick out of it. So, 
Again, my apologies. Now the oil is kind of getting saturated from the powder, the loose powder. So that's why it's getting cloudy and you can't see anything right now. Not that it was very clear to begin with. The lighting here is kind of tricky to work with. But here we are. That's the second fry for the first batch. We're going to transfer the second batch. It's not bad looking, isn't it? Let me see if I can get a good look at this. Right? Looks pretty good. So I'm going to toss this back in the batter. And we're going to get a better batter. Here, better, 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 better. It's a baseball joke. Never know what kind of audience I might reach. Maybe people don't play baseball where you are. Take my word for it, it was a baseball joke. This would make a great snack with the game, by the way, my opinion. When this is done. We're actually going to be serving this with beer. So, yeah, it would be a, a great snack for the game. A great snack for anything, let's be honest. All right, so this is rebattered. Let's sit quietly in the corner there. So I use Google Assistant. You can use Alexa. You can use one of those wind-up toys, your watch, whatever you have, to help you remind uh, for cooking times. Um, we want this to cook, I would say, all in all, about 10 minutes, right? Since it's boneless, um, and we're going to have it cook in the frying pan on top of the frying, the deep frying. So I had it about four and a half minutes uh, before uh, when it was frying I'm going to do it about four and a half minutes again for both batches so for a total of nine minutes right and then we're going to do a quick stir fry for a minute and so at high temperature so all in all about 10 minutes and that should be plenty of cooking for uh, the, the size of chicken that we have and the fact that it's boneless so see you in a bit so I did a little switch over on the oven. I reversed the pan and the, uh, excuse me, the frying chicken so that you guys can get a better look at what's going to happen next. It's actually quite simple, but nevertheless, you might be interested. So let's go have a look at that. All right. Here we have our vegetables. So I start with the garlic and the green onions which are on top remember it's okay if there's a little bit of the other vegetables that go in and the idea of putting them in this order is that you have some of these vegetables that give out more flavor than the others and quicker and some of them, some of them need to quick more to cook more and that is to say that some cook quicker than others. So the garlic and the onions, you want those to be really cooked well. Whereas the other vegetables, it's okay if they're a little crunchy, right? So green onions are okay if they're a little bit crunchy, but the garlic, you really want to make sure it's well cooked. Raw garlic is very hard to digest. Some people can do just fine. But I, for one, am not taking any chances. All right. This is going, look at how this is thickening right now. Oh boy, oh boy. And I can't tell you about the smell. I can't even begin to explain the smell that this is giving off right now. So I'm going to toss in the rest. Let's go.
Ladies and gentlemen, if it is only for the sauce, this recipe is worth you doing just for the sauce. Oh, and by the way, I, like I said, I apologize for the lighting. I, I guess everything is a little bit too bright here. Wonder if this is any better for you guys. I guess it is. Should have done that first, right? You're going to be able to see a little bit better what's going on. Hey, Google, set a timer for three minutes. So I always have like a, a minute and a half of lead time that I do off camera when I'm doing stuff. So I can afford to do only three minutes of chicken cooking now. So let's bring this down. We don't want to overcook. We just want to get things ready. So the bowl that I was using just a minute ago for the vegetables, I'm going to put all of the cooked chicken in it because I'm going to need my strainer again one last time for the chicken who has been rebattered. and redunked. This is getting nice golden brown. And at the end of the timer, we're going to take these out. We're going to strain them. And then we're going to take the strainer. We're going to move it aside. We're going to dump the oil from the pan. I'm going to take everything that's in the pan and all of the chicken and put it back in there. And then we're going to stir fry it together. And we're done. That will be the recipe. All right. So while we're waiting for that, let me go select the beverage for the evening. So tonight for the evening, I've selected a French Canadian beverage made by the Three Musketeers, Les Trois Mousquetaires. It's uh, their red beer, obviously, as you can see. Um, I can't tell you enough about this beer. Um, it's very, it's very simple. It's not pretentious. It's a very clean tasting beer. But what I like is that the particular case that I got had a mix of blonde, white, red, and dark beer, and all of them were great. I'm usually picky when the beer gets darker, but this red and the dark beer that is in the Trois Mousquetaires mixed pack are absolutely fabulous. I can uh, recommend them. They make all kinds of other beers, uh, stouts and whatnot, but that mixed pack is really a good value as far as I'm concerned. So this is what we're having with dinner tonight. So here we are, we poiled out all the oil. This is still very hot. I'm gonna now transfer our sauce into the pan. From the pan to the other pan, right? Now, can turn off the fire on this guy, move that pan away. Grab our chicken and toss that in there. Bring the fire down real low. We don't really need fire anymore. Right? Now, I don't know how familiar or how, you know, what your level of agility using a wok is. But I like to toss things using the wok, so I'm going to step away from the oven and put it like here for tossing. So, forgive me. That's just how I like to do things. And... Well, our vegetables are ever so slightly overdone but I'm sure that I won't care a little bit. Should have brought the fire down. So when it comes to you guys turn, remember to bring the vegetables down when you're doing the final fry, if you're doing it in two batches, I like I did. If you have a larger pot, 
a really cylindrical pot. I guess it's going to fry you know, just a matter of surface and whatever. You'll be able to cook more chicken at the same time. You're probably not going to get into that situation. Well, that's it, folks. It's time to serve. So, okay, as promised, here we are. About to have a bite to eat. Let's pour one of these. And let's give it a try. Let's go for a small piece first. good it's really really good surprisingly so now like anything you ever do if you're ever gonna get to a point where it goes beyond good it becomes great I have to think if I was gonna do this again excuse me what would I do different well I'll tell you what I would do different a I would double the quantity of sauce because the sauce is really making this much much better second of all sorry for the notifications again and second of all I had to cook the vegetables a little bit less obviously they're a little dark but otherwise this thing is knock it out of the park crunchy tasty not too spicy it's awesome guys try it trust me you're gonna adore it and you know what it's not too bad for you enjoy thank you for watching if you enjoyed this, everybody tells you this, subscribe if you'd like to, send me a like, that would be great. I'd like to hear your comments too, if you would like to, all right? So, see you next time. Bye guys.